Well, thank you very much, CC, for that introduction. And Jeff, it's, it's good to see you too. And I want to thank everyone at MMA for allowing me uh, to join you virtually today to share a few thoughts. Usually attending the MMA annual meeting is one of those January traditions the Lieutenant Governor and I look forward to every year. And as a former member of my select board, the LG as well, uh, we were both disappointed that we didn't have that chance to see so many local officials in one room. But I'm glad we can connect virtually and we look forward to being back together in person next year. I also want to take a moment to thank MMA for your incredible leadership and partnership over the course of this past year. As Lieutenant Governor Polito noted in her remarks yesterday, since the beginning of the pandemic, MMA has played an invaluable role in helping our administration connect with municipal officials across the Commonwealth. From the initial public health restrictions to the reopening process, to vaccine distribution and everything in between, many of the measures that we took relied on the hard work of municipal officials to get done. And I'm grateful that by working closely with our municipalities over the past several years, we've built a strong foundation of partnership because that was invaluable as we face this pandemic together. Through weekly calls with your members, our administration was able to keep municipal leaders informed about changes in our public health protocols. These calls were also a regular opportunity to answer questions, hear feedback, and share best practices. As we go forward and emerge from this pandemic, which we will, uh, we'll continue to maintain a close relationship with our cities and towns. And as you know better than most, the pandemic is unlike any other crisis we've faced here in the Commonwealth. It's taken thousands of lives and disrupted our economy and upended everything about the way we live. Fortunately, brighter days are ahead. Vaccines are here in Massachusetts and we're working through our distribution timeline. As of this week, we're vaccinating everyone in phase one and looking forward to move to phase two next month. We've been grateful to work with local leaders on the distribution process specifically for your first responders. In just a few weeks, we worked with many communities and healthcare providers to stand up around 120 clinics to vaccinate police officers, firefighters, EMTs, and other frontline workers in your communities who put themselves in harm's way every day. These sites will play an important role as we continue to build out our vaccine infrastructure for future phases. In the meantime, we still need to remain vigilant, as you all know better than most, and do all we can to stop the spread of COVID. We're grateful for everything you're doing to encourage mask wearing and social distancing and to enforce the health protocols and gathering limits that we've put in place. These measures will help us push back against the virus so that we can keep our economy and our schools open. We know that your downtowns and main streets are facing unprecedented challenges due to COVID and we're committing, committed to work with all of you uh, to stimulate our economic recovery. That's why we're hard at work right now distributing funds from our $720 million Small Business Relief Initiative, which we announced in December. To date, the program's awarded over $230 million in grants to over 4,000 businesses in all regions of the Commonwealth. The grants are designed to help struggling businesses keep the lights on and cover operating expenses for up to three months or $75,000. Lieutenant Governor and I understand the importance of these Main Street shops, how badly they've been hit, and why they matter so much to your communities. We've had the chance to visit many of your downtowns and to talk with the people who work and shop at those businesses, which make up in many respects the vac backbone of a lot of our communities. We believe this significant relief package will play an important role in helping everybody get back on their feet. Earlier this month, we were also pleased to sign a comprehensive economic development bill that was designed to further promote growth in all parts of the Commonwealth. That bill incorporated feedback from local partners and includes a number of tools that will help cities and towns promote economic development. It also includes our housing choice legislation. Thank you for your help on that, which modernizes zoning laws to enable the approval of certain housing projects by a simple majority as opposed to the previous two-thirds requirement. I can't tell you how grateful we are to so many of you who joined with us to advocate for this important legislation. It was the result of years of advocacy and collaboration, 
and we appreciate the legislature for including these provisions in the final economic development bill. We believe housing choice will help communities promote responsible new development, revitalize in many cases and reimagine their downtowns, and support future economic growth. Earlier this month, we were also able to sign a new transportation bond bill. The $16 billion authorization will help fund key priorities to strengthen and modernize our statewide network of roads, bridges, and public transportation. It also includes investments in municipal infrastructure. This includes more resources for programs like Complete Streets and the Municipal Small Bridge Program, as well as new programs like the Municipal Pavement Program. Another tool that we use to support municipal infrastructure, obviously, is the Chapter 90 program. I'm pleased to announce today that next week we'll be filing what I would think of as almost a perennial at this point, legislation authorizing $200 million in Chapter 90 funds to support local infrastructure projects in all 351 cities and towns. As you all know, Chapter 90 funding helps each of our communities make infrastructure upgrades to local roads and bridges. And since taking office, we've released $1.36 billion in funding through Chapter 90 formulas. And if approved by the legislature, that would obviously bring that total up to $1.56 billion. In addition, next week we'll also be filing our FY22 budget proposal. We'll have more details to share soon, but as the Lieutenant Governor said yesterday, our budget proposal will keep our commitment to our cities and towns by ensuring that unrestricted local aid increases at the same rate as consensus tax revenue. It will also keep our commitment to local school districts by fully funding the first year of the Student Opportunity Act. We're pleased to continue making these important investments in our schools and our communities. Over the past six years, we've worked closely with the legislature to triple the size of our rainy day fund by carefully managing the state's finances. And that's enabled us to make these important investments to and with the people of Massachusetts without raising taxes in the midst of a pandemic. We believe this approach will help our communities grow and thrive as we emerge from this pandemic. And we're grateful to have strong relationships with our colleagues and local government as we work together to make that happen. Finally, I just want to say thanks to MMA for including me and giving me this chance to speak. I wish I could be there in person because obviously, um, like everybody who's on this virtual gathering, you wouldn't get into local government, you wouldn't get into state government if you didn't like to be out and about with the people of your community, however you want to define it. I can tell you that the Lieutenant Governor and I miss terribly those opportunities that we used to have every single day to be out somewhere in Massachusetts talking to either you or to your constituents about whatever it was that was on your minds and how we could work together to make things better. I mean, we both think for most of the time, that was what we would refer to as oxygen. And to spend the last 10 months uh, of our time here in state government basically in this chair, doing almost no traveling around the Commonwealth, doing what I'm supposed to do and spending my time primarily with those in my immediate household, um, I'd be kidding if I didn't say, um, I'm a little hungry for some contact uh, out there across uh, the Commonwealth with the good people of this great state and with many of all of you. Uh, I certainly hope that by the time we get to next year, by the time we get to next fall, uh, we'll have a chance to see each other in person and to get back into the business of working in person to help move this Commonwealth forward, to help you strengthen your communities, and to help people continue to make this a great place to live, work, and raise a family. Thank you.